Hi everyone and welcome to the How to Contribute series. Today I am with David Price of Redwood JS and we are going to learn how to contribute to Redwood JS. Hi. Yes, we are. Uh, Tracy, this is really fun. Uh, excited you all are doing this series. So thank you. And thank you for inviting me. Uh, yes. we, we love contributors. Redwood JS, uh, since the very beginning, we dreamed of having a really vibrant, dynamic open source community. And optimizing for collaboration has been by design from the very beginning. So this is, this is our lifeblood. We love talking about it. And I'll try not to get too excited. Yeah. Well, okay. Tell us a little bit about Redwood JS and then your relation to Redwood. Yeah, sure. So Redwood JS, the JS is for JavaScript, um, TypeScript, very welcome, is a app framework for startups. And what that means is anyone individual getting started on a on a prototyping a product up to teams that scale for high growth. Redwood JS is a framework that is going to scale with you, but it's going to start early with you in the prototyping. Um, and it is integrating everything you would need. Uh, to do full stack development, including CI, it includes testing, code generators, uh, you have storybook out of the box, um, the test suite works web and API, you can mock data, and all of that just comes with Redwood. And that's how we help people build full stack applications. Awesome. And it's kind of fun too, because you know, it's fun to build stuff. Yes. And what about you? Uh, me? So I am... Oh man, I've, I've worn a lot of hats, uh, but I've been in technology for a long time. I actually started mm -hmm. as a mechanical engineer, Tracy. Nice. I, I worked on landing gear struts at Boeing and that is another lifetime ago. Uh, <laughs> but I've, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. Uh, I know the pains of starting a company and mm -hmm. technology pains and building a product. Uh, I, through family friends, met this guy named Tom Preston Warner and his much better half, uh, Teresa, uh, back in San Francisco about 10 years ago. We were family friends and we dreamed up this project. Tom mostly was dreaming up this, this thing he wanted to build um, mm -hmm. back in pubs over pizza and beers in San Francisco. And he got it started with Peter Pistorius back in 2018, early 2019. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came on board later that year. Uh, and there were four of us that, that kind of birthed this thing into the world that was originally Tom's brainchild on March mm -hmm. of 2020. And that's how I got involved. And very early on, um, we were put this out to the world and we're looking for people who wanted to use this, but also wanted to be a part of making Redwood something amazing. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. I would love to just like see Redwood JS and how to navigate it. Like how is the repo set up and everything? Um, yes. Can should, I share? Yeah, should, should we start in there? Okay, let's yeah. do it. Now, if you, to see Redwood in action, there's there's at least mm -hmm. uh, 17 startups I know with some amazing products, but we're not uh -huh. going to look at those today. Uh, but yeah, we're going to look at all the code that powers those startups, which is really fun. Uh -huh. uh, so let's let me let me show you where I recommend people get started, because mm -hmm. just coming into a, a the repo code base, it, you know, it's intimidating for me. <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. like, what what language is this? Where am I? Do I start with the package JSON because maybe it's JavaScript? Uh, but all of that is the details that come a, a little bit later. A great mm -hmm. place to get started. But sure, there's helpful information here. Um, are people contributing? Are people using this package? Mm -hmm. How many stars does it have? That that's an indication that things are happening. Although it doesn't really tell you a lot about how the project is structured. And, and honestly, Tracy, something that's really important to us, the culture of the project, which we really care about tremendously. The best place and entry point to Redwood, I'm on the redwoodjs.com website. Is, is the font size okay here? I don't know if that boosts Yes, it up. yes, it looks okay. perfect, yeah. And what we recommend is uh, take a look at our docs and start with the introduction to the project because this gives the vision as well as the background. And I told you a few things here about why Redwood came to be um, and why Redwood's gonna be around for a long time. We're really committed mm -hmm. to this project and really excited about it. But after you read through the introduction, then come right down here to this document called contributing. And by the way, you could just search for this up at the top and you can mm -hmm. get to the contributing document really quickly. And this will walk you through all the things you need to know about getting plugged into our community, which by the way, is the most important first step to becoming a contributor to Redwood. Mm -hmm. Let mm -hmm. somebody know you wanna be a contributor and you'll be delightfully surprised how many people uh, come alongside you, get excited with you and wanna help you take that step. So right. 
get plugged into the community. Uh, we link to some uh, issues in our repo. We love docs. Docs are as, if not more important than code. Uh, we mm -hmm. can talk about that. And then this talks about the structure of the project. So each of the packages that we publish that run our framework. Oh, I like links that. links to those. Yeah. So this is, the, right. So if you just start in the code, you don't have a sense for why things are where they are. Yes. But if you understand what you're trying to do, and if you haven't tried the Redwood tutorial yet, um, that's a great place to understand, like, why do we do all these things? Go build a Redwood app via the Redwood tutorial. The link is uh, here on this page. Uh, but then you'll understand all these pieces um, that are the, the structural building blocks. And then we could look at the code uh, beneath all those. And it just goes farther down, contributing docs, all these things below here. Just get more into what the steps are for uh, contributing to docs how we think about uh, the code and the code structure uh, and getting started. So oh, but this is amazing. where, yeah, this is where we recommend people get started. So um, I'll go back to the repo now, but any more questions about this introductory information? No, but I'm so curious, does the repo directly link to that and say, hey, best way to get started is go to redwoodjs.com slash doc slash contributing. Uh, we, in the README? No, but oh, the README does. Yes. So, oh, good, good, good. <laughs> because because what we have is um, because we really pay attention to people who are building. Right, you need docs if you want to build a thing with Redwood, and we call that mm -hmm. a Redwood project. Mm -hmm. And then you also need docs if you want to contribute back to the Redwood project. And mm -hmm. you know what? Mm -hmm. We we believe like here's our creed: if we help others be successful with Redwood then that's mm -hmm. what will make Redwood successful. So we have to do both really well. And that's what I mean by us optimizing for collaboration. So we, we get everyone to that contributing doc to kind of say like, here's a starting place um, right now, that. where do you want to go? Yeah. And in the docs you get here in the repo specifically. So one of the links, <laughs> if you started here, one of the links would bring you to the repo and you would land on this contributing doc and that's inside the repo. And this is about like, how do I set up my local dev environment? Mm -hmm. um, what are the what are the command line tools that I have for development and doing testing and QA? How do all Ooh. those things work? And all of that's yeah. here inside of our contributing doc in the repo itself. But you would link to that from the doc on our website. Does that make sense? It's all yes. Okay, we, one starting place, many paths. Yeah, I love it. And then as far as the repo itself, the, the main place you're going to spend time here is inside of the packages uh, folder. So in this directory, and these are all of the packages that get published to NPM and mm -hmm. are included as dependencies inside of a Redwood project. Mm -hmm. Each one of these packages, we'll see if I can pick a good one here. If I click on the CLI, We'll we'll be redoing some of this, but each package. This is just a good structural package for projects. Oh yeah, I in love general. that. Yeah, yeah, you want to have a sense of like, what's the purpose of this thing? What does it yeah. do? And then also, you. who's in charge? Go ahead. I just hate it when there's like packages, and you're just like, okay, you have like 10 million packages, but like, what does slash next <laughs> yeah. mean? Does that mean next JS? Does that mean next up on the right. other? This is really cool. This is oh, and everyone has a package lead. Yes. So, right. Because that is a great, like we're optimized for collaboration and important part of collaboration is like, who's the lead and point on what, like if I had a question, oh my God, um, that's amazing. Who, who would I reach out to about this package? Now I'm showing you a good one here. Our, our command line, like Redwood CLI is a very important piece of, and it's active. Of we have course. a lot of things happening here. It's also a great place to get started as a contributor. We could talk more yeah. about that, uh, mm -hmm. but, but this is, this is kind of ideal one, but each, each package has a readme. And you know what? If you open a package and the README is just a template and it's incomplete and you see some to do's, mm -hmm. Tracy, you know, it'd be a great, incredibly welcome, helpful to everybody in Redwood community contribution, updating that README. Oh, yes. <laughs> right? Yes, so, absolutely. So help, help get us on track. But yes, and this, this tells you who to reach out to in the project. Um, and there's others, but these are great people to start with. And then this actually gives you documentation about contributing to the CLI package in this case, Ooh, because wow. it's not just enough to know what the package does. It's It's got its own stuff. And instead of you reading through all the imports and the package JSON to figure it all out, uh, we just tell you what we're trying to do here and let you know what tools you're going to need to know to work on this package. Yeah. Okay. So like, let's say I'm like, oh my gosh, I love the CLI. I need to, I need to work on the CLI. 
Okay, so now I know the people, I know how to get started, I know the purpose and I know the vision, but now what do I do? Yeah, like, well, how do I know what to do? Now? Right, yeah, you know, <laughs> okay, so again, you know what? The details, right? So, okay, look, everybody, I don't care how senior you are, we talk about this a lot in our public meetups. So I'll have, yeah. I'll have Bob who's 20 years, Ruby on Rails, and a, a phenomenal developer, right? So people uh -huh. look to Rob for advice and as an experienced developer. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we have Rob tell stories about contributing to other projects in open source. Yeah. And Rob's first words are every time is like, it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's nerve wracking. And, and you don't know, like, so, so the place to start is not, oh man, what tools do I need? How can I sync up and test these things locally? Um, that's that's not the place to get started. Mm -hmm. uh, the place to get started, as I said, is go into the community and get some moral support. And the way you do that is you say, hey, uh, my name is fill in the blanks and I'm new to the Redwood JS project, but I, I'm interested in helping out. And mm -hmm. that feels great because all of a sudden you have some people that care that you're there. And so some of that resistance is is away. But then what's a work on? And I think that yeah. was your, that's your real question. Yeah. So yeah. let me, let me show you a few things there because there's, there's kind of two ways that that, that answer pops up. Yeah. And way one is I am like the path one, I'm building something in Redwood. I've got a project I'm excited about. Uh -huh. Something's not working right or something's missing. Uh -huh. And that becomes like the desire and the fire to contribute to the project. So uh -huh. That's a great path. And we love that synergy. That's how Redwood itself gets better. People building mm -hmm. something and they say, hey, we need to do this better or add this on. And they come back and um, and they own that. They get a PR and the community comes around them and helps them get that PR in. Mm -hmm. Now, the other way, the other path, which is just as good um, and we welcome is is just is finding something that's like high value and immediate, like a bug to fix. Mm -hmm. or um, a feature that no one's working on, but we want to get into our V1 roadmap. I could talk about where we are as we get to the end of this. And let me show you how to do that. Because okay. often that's where people really start on their journey. And this can be overwhelming. So we yeah. have tried to organize this um, as, as cleanly as we can. So let me start, let me click on this again. This is our projects board on GitHub. Mm -hmm. And we update this. Um, you know what? This is not my favorite tool in the whole world. But mm -hmm. it's the best way we can let everybody know where the project is at yeah. and what we're working on now. Uh -huh. So this, uh, you'll see next release, version 38, was due out <clears throat> yesterday. I'm drafting the release notes right after this, and you'll see version nice. 38 coming out today. Uh, it tells you when our V1 release candidate is coming, what the priorities were for this project, et cetera. So this is the overview, but so click close. on it. Yeah. yeah, we're really close. Uh, click on this. And now you have a project board that is live. Ooh, that is so cool that you can just like straight up go into like the core team's Trello, basically. This is right. And, and this is like, not. No. <laughs> and, and this is not the best tool. Like there's other things, but it's the right. best communication transparency we can have. Oh my so gosh, this that's amazing. Gets, this gets updated all the time. And I'm just going to go right to left. So these things here this is this is highest priority for the current release cycle which we just started 39 because 38 is locked in and odds are you'll see people assigned and these things are in progress there's some docs that we're doing right now we are our docs are always up to date our docs are high mm -hmm. priority um and then there's this other column that's in progress priority and odds are look at these we've got people assigned to these right now mm -hmm. and so those there's some prs those are being open and worked on but now we have some other really high priority things. And that's these three mm -hmm. columns. So if you're getting started with the Redwood project, take a look at these three columns on deck help wanted, right? Like we mm -hmm. need your help. Um, there's some backlog PRs. So people have opened PRs that um, are, are important. They're not highest priority, but they probably could use some help going forward. So mm -hmm. maybe that's a review. Um, maybe, maybe the contributor, the author of the PR got stuck and could use someone to just come in and give some ideas. But mm -hmm. also it's a great place to see like current status of the project. And yeah. then this third column is uh, it, it's our ice box, but that only means these are actually triaged and priority. They just didn't matter for us to get to our version one release candidate. Yeah. But as soon as our version one release candidate, so these are all welcome. Mm -hmm. As soon as our version one release candidate is in, 
then um, all of these PRs, there are 81 of them. Sorry, yeah. all of these tasks, these are all very important. Oh my gosh, 81. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so if this board is kind of crazy, which it can yeah. be, right? Like that's a lot of stuff how to read through. There's another way to do this. I'm going to click on this help wanted tab right here. Ooh, Boom. yes. And um, what that should have done, here we go, is no, what it didn't. Let me do it this way. Help wanted. There we go. And now I'm just looking at the GitHub issues. But those are those are um, these are all filtered by the help wanted label. So I could go through and look at anything that's got a help wanted on it. Um, Hacktoberfest and help wanted, or Hacktoberfest will be done by the time this video is done. But like mm -hmm. the same thing, there's good first issue, which is yeah. us saying we don't know your skill level. So your skill this might require more or less skill, but this is a good entry point to the Redwood project because its scope is its scope is appropriate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you'll see all these other tags. Another one that is really important is anything with bug on it. And we're going to get all of our <laughs> bugs resolved for version one. But all I did here was I started with the project board. I took a look around. I clicked on a label. And now I'm just filtering issues by those labels. Yeah. And, and Tracy, you just I just read through these things. And, that's amazing. Um, ask some questions and find something that's of interest to you. So I so I see there's a few people signed. Are there any on here that aren't that people are not assigned to? Oh, that thank you. That's oh, here a we go. Question. Running I, tests with multiple coverage reports. So I can do that one. Yeah, ab absolutely. Now, now here, this is something we're working on, it, and I think it's just us trying to find a way to use GitHub appropriately. Uh -huh. We never want an issue or a PR to just go die somewhere in a corner, which happens, right? Yes, yes. Like we've got 269 and how do we keep track of all those? So uh -huh. what we do is we make sure that if anything is priority for the near term, yeah. a core team maintainer is assigned to that issue, oh, but okay. that doesn't mean it's not available. And so that's, what's, oh, that's different in our project. That's so that we okay. don't lose track. Um, so I encourage anyone watching this video, if just because you see an assignee here or not, um, come and read the issue because sometimes people say they're going to take a stab at it and then just life and they don't have right. time um, and it's still stale. You can always pop down here in a comment and just say, hey, I, I would be willing to help out on this. Um, I don't know what the current status is, but if there's anything I could do, uh, what do you think? Right? Mm -hmm. Question mark. Boom. We're going to get that in our notification feed and we'll let you know. So just ask. Okay. I love that. That's awesome. Um, okay, so that's great. Let me look at my other questions I have for you. So we talked about the tags. Um, how do you feel about like code reviews and people just jumping in and doing code reviews? Yeah, let's, okay. We, you, you know, we don't have as many people do code reviews. This would probably be helpful. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm not sure why I think people might feel like they've got to be like really good developers to do a yes, code review. Yes. Um, that is so not the case. So as a maintainer in the core yeah. team, here's where we get stuck. Mm -hmm. Just doing the functional testing on a PR. So mm -hmm. let me show you how you could come in and help review by doing a functional test. And it's it's super easy. Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay. And this also gets into the tooling, which I haven't talked a lot about yet. Um, mm -hmm. But let's make sure we come back to that. I'll, I won't show you how to set things up, but I'll. we have a video. Um, mm -hmm. and a really nice document walking through how to set all those things up. Amazing. Let's start with a PR. So, um, and I've got a story to tell about Peter, a uh, virtuous sub here that maybe we'll get to at the end, but because um, uh -huh. the story is a great one, but this is a draft PR that came in. Uh, we, and this is going to require running the CLI on a project. Like uh -huh. there's no unit test that will guarantee that this works. We just have to run it. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you scroll all the way down uh, to the bottom of this one, right? There's a lot of mm -hmm. conversation happening here. Uh, inside of the CI checks that we have, click to open that up. And we need to find a better place to put this, but just know there's this link to Gitpod. Mm -hmm. And when you click that link, which I already did, um, make mm -hmm. sure you open up in a new tab. Look at this thing. So this is Gitpod magic. What uh -huh. this did is it created, this is a VS Code browser editor. Mm -hmm. And it created a virtual workspace that includes the framework code base for that PR, right? Mm -hmm. It spun up a test project. So a Redwood test project. 
-hmm. that is using the code from the PR. Mm -hmm. It did all that for you in the background. And now um, there's some links here that I could use. Now I'm actually able to, this is the test project right here. Um, so this is a Redwood app that's running for testing. And Amazing. from right here, I'm not in the correct directory uh, because I opened this earlier. But if I go to the Redwood, um, let me see where I am. It pod works. Oh, I need to go to the just test app from there. It's not doing my autocomplete. <laughs> it's going to show. Yeah. Okay. Here I am. I'm going to run that command yarn Redwood. Uh, we were working on a storybook um, CI option. It's called smoke mm -hmm. test. I'm running the command. It's using the code from my new package that I'm working on the PR. And mm -hmm. I'm running it on a test project right here. So anyone could come into a project or, and come into a PR and go, oh, I could test that code. I love and if it. you were to do that, go through this process and just report back what worked, what didn't work as a review, that is so helpful. I didn't yeah. have to read any code. I just had to read the PR and test out the code and report back. And that helps us out so much because you can imagine as a maintainer going from PR to PR for review, um, this can take yes. a lot of time. Yes. Well, that is amazing. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, that's really cool. Um, okay, so let me see what are some of my other questions. Well, I I think uh, I, I wanted to talk about uh, you know the meetings. Are there core team meetings? Can anybody attend? Where are they? Do you have notes somewhere, or uh, is that like? Yes, thank you for. Okay, that's a great. We love <laughs> we love community. I am going to go through our forums right now, which is community.redwoodjs.com, uh -huh. and. Let me just talk first about how the Redwood community is structured. Mm -hmm. So we think of it, we're optimized like as a network because networks are the most highly collaborative organization, organizational form you can have. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can also think about it kind of like, you know, circles uh, and you can get closer and closer to the center, although you don't have to. So we have the general public and people that are um, a part of the project. They're following mm -hmm. along. They're using Redwood. And they might not be engaging in the virtual and in, in the forums or the discord or not, uh, but that's fine. They're part of the Redwood ecosystem. And then there are people that are coming along and want to be contributors and they're helping out, they're learning, um, they're, they're mm -hmm. taking, taking care of some high priority docs, mm -hmm. um, or they're just being awesome on the mm -hmm. forums or in our discord with support and encouraging people. We love all that. And when we, when those people, when we see them, uh, being active in the community, uh, we have, here it is. Um, we invite them to our Redwood contributors meetups. And so we describe this as a loosely held invite only. Let me boost this up. This is public information on our forum. You could read about it. And it's designed to get people together that are contributing to the project so they can meet each other. We answer questions, but we build relationship and get to know each other mm -hmm. so that then we can go and collaborate more. So this is a this is a part of the core. Um, mm -hmm. This isn't necessarily core team, mm -hmm. but everyone that is currently on the core team um, has been coming to these contributors meetups for quite a while. We've been doing these since the beginning just because how could we not get to know the people that were participating in this project? It just blew our minds and we wanted to know who they were and we want to find out how we could help each other more. Oh, that's uh, so, really cool. So this is open to anyone, anywhere. Um, it just but you have to be invited. Yeah, you yeah you have to be invited. But really, Tracy, you just kind of have to show up and say you want to be a part of it. <laughs> um, and that's okay. down here. That's down here in this paragraph as well. Yeah. Uh, so there, we want to keep it small. Like we don't want it just to be come one, come all. Um, mm -hmm. So we do want to just make sure it's people that really are the like whether they've started or not, they want to participate as a contributor. Um, and right. that's the only requirement, right? Yeah. So a little bit of enthusiasm and uh, yeah. we'd love to have you. Um, and you know oh how you get invited? Amazing. You DM me. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's your step. That's it. It doesn't take anything else. Or DM anyone on the core team. Anyone on the core team can invite people to participate. Um, I love that. Yeah. And we do have a core team. I think there's yes. 17 of us now. Uh, wow. We, we, sh we want to scale the core team as the community scales because it should. Uh, and, um, and there's no magic to how people are on the core team. They've just been a part of the project for a while. They've been leaders in the community from, uh, running events like the makers hour to supporting people and discourse to, or discord, uh, right. What are these things I keep saying, uh, our forums in our chat, uh, right. to doing docs, uh, right. So there's all these different ways that people 
were leading in the community yeah. uh, and they become core team members and it's, there's no more That's magic awesome. other than that. I love that. Okay. So last few minutes, definitely want to just talk about success stories. Like what's going on right now where you're just like, man, this was so amazing or, uh, oh. you know, yeah. I want to talk about how people have been successful in being a part of Redwood. Yeah. And, um, okay. I got a lot of stories <laughs> I could tell. And I could also talk about what it means to be successful because that, that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll get to the answer of the successes I've seen after I tell a couple stories and I will make these quick because you know me, I get excited about story time, <laughs> uh, but, but to get to success, like I, I really, and this is through years of experience, both uh -huh. the good kind and the really, really terrible kind, mm -hmm. um, as well as just like learning how to like do things better. But I just, if you optimize for collaboration, I think there's no better first step to try to get to success on the other time. Like if you want to optimize for success, however you define it, collaboration is the best way to get there. So mm -hmm. let me tell you a few stories. And that's, that's our creed. How, how you help Redwood be successful is actually by helping everyone be successful with Redwood. Okay. Yes. So my last 24 hours. All right. <laughs> this is, and it is a little jam packed, uh, but let me tell you a few stories of contributors on yeah. Redwood JS. So um, I mentioned, I mentioned Pete. Uh, he was mm -hmm. Virtuous Hub, open a PR. Uh, and Pete, I'm not sure how he came to be a part of the project, uh, is mm -hmm. a part of Hacktoberfest, but came up, started opening some PRs early in October. Uh, he came to a contributors meetup that we had, and we've been stuck on that PR that I just showed you. Mm -hmm. Well, um, because this is open source and highly collaborative, um, I emailed, I, I actually Twittered on the old Twitter. And Michael, it's Storybook, so one of the heads of Storybook Project on Twitter, I said, hey, we've been having some, and they, we tightly collaborate with them. Mm -hmm. I said, we've been stuck on some CI things. Is there anyone on your team who could help you out? Um, and Michael says, sure, let me take a look. Well, Peter is now involved in a PR, and I don't know who Peter is, other mm -hmm. than a fantastic contributor who's been very patient with me. And he's now collaborating with Michael from Storybook on that PR to help us help the Redwood community with the Storybook integration, right? Uh -huh. And that just all happened yesterday. So what, I just I just love that stuff, right? Um, yeah. and, and Peter showed up and started getting involved. So last night, um, Alexa, I don't know where Alexa's from or who she is. Um, she's been active in the issues and she's trying to get Chakra UI working in Redwood. Um, Alexa has some problems with, chakra and some storybook integration you saw me last night i yes went to the went to the twitters again and now sage and his crew from chakra ui wants to come on board and help with an integration for chakra i've invited alexa to come and be a part of that mm -hmm. uh, because i can't i can't do all these things but there are people that are part of the community they want to work and help out and this is just like rad sauce open source yeah happening and folding oh and then last night I had this amazing conversation with this group of, of women who've been a part of the Redwood community who are really excited about increasing the reach of the, you know, age, experience, diversity of the Redwood community. Mm -hmm. And we had this phenomenal conversation with these amazing women that are like, yeah, like we're in, what can we do? They've got all these ideas. Um, as of this morning, someone posted about the meetup or this meeting conversation we had on Twitter and mm -hmm. then um, someone asked if they wanted to be a mentor to help a new grad from school get a part of the Redwood project. And like, so Tracy Lee, that's all success for me yeah. because what I've seen is starting a year and a half, two years ago when this project kicked off, I've seen people get jobs because yeah. of their involvement in Redwood. They started off the first contribution to open source. And that led to some career trajectory for them. I've seen people switch career trajectory because they got into JavaScript. Uh, because of Redwood yes. JS, and now we're seeing people start companies and get yeah. hired, and those companies that they're sorry start companies and then get funded, and then those companies that they fund, they're reaching back into the Redwood community, and yeah. guess who they're tapping into to help with their project or their consulting work, um, and I, I just it's it's amazing. I, I look at yeah. it all and my mind just kind of blown. Uh, because of all the ways people are collaborating and the kinds of like personal life change and outcomes that are happening for people. And that's not everyone, right? Yeah. Like it's hard to put in the time and get involved. Um, and there's, there's luck and serendipity involved, but I tell you what, watching great people get connected, work on a project, 
and take that relationship and something comes out of it down the road, like that's rad yeah. sauce. And that's, oh my God, I love it. That's success. So yeah. I well, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for this. I really appreciate it. I mean, I love Road I know you guys have been very intentional about building your community. So seeing that and seeing again the success and uh, how things are set up, it's really inspiring uh, the way you all have it set up. So now I'm inspired. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to get involved. But you know me, I have 10 million things. I, I know you do, <laughs> but you know what? I'll take it. You know what? All, all you need to do here, the best way, and you know this, the best way you could help is uh, just keep keep sending people our way and just yeah. know that they're so welcome. And anyone that comes, we we have a lot to do in 2022 uh, yeah. to help, especially just to make the, it, it's there's complexity there, but to continue to make onboarding, whether you want to build with Redwood or build into Redwood, uh, we're going to keep making that easier, but send people my way. And you know what? The thing is, I've got the people to connect them to now uh, from all over the world, women, men that, that are starting to help other people on board the Redwood project. So that's the way you could help us is just keep sending people our way that want to be a part yeah. of a vibrant open source community. Yeah. Well, everyone definitely check out Redwood JS um, as a project to use for your next side project or startup or whatever it is. Um, and then, you know, you see now how easy it is, again, to contribute. So definitely so easy to contribute. I feel so much safer now. So thank you, David. <laughs> you, know, you know why safety is important is because that's when you start taking risks, right? You get excited yes. and you think like, oh, I could try that thing. And uh, you know what? Jump on in. Oh my take God, take that it. risk. We'd love to have you. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Thank you, Tracy.